Morning guys and welcome back to Dazzle Koi. Thank you for your patience, it's been a while since I posted. New backdrop today, let me know what you think, it is a work in progress. So yeah, any comments, any uh, ideas for improvements, do let me know. Today I'm talking salt, so yeah, I always said I would never do salt. It's such an emotive subject, um, everyone has a strong opinion, always leads to an argument when it comes up on the forums and the, the Facebook groups. But yeah, I think it's time. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk salt today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with an introduction to salt, what it actually is. I'm gonna just touch briefly on Koi's evolutionary journey to the point they're at today. So the sort of the habitat that they've evolved to thrive in. Then I'm gonna go uh, into how salt is used in koi keeping. So there's two kind of main areas. So there's there's short term high concentration, and then there's long-term low concentration are the two kind of main areas that I see people talk about uh, when it comes to salt. So I'll touch on both of those. I'm going to go into the misuse of salt in koi keeping uh, and the negative impacts that salt has on koi. And then I'll just go into the sort of what kind of salt you should use if you choose to use salt, um, the dose rates, the method, what you need to do. And then at the end, I've got just a couple of little bonus um, bonus uses for salt so yeah get yourself a cup of tea strap yourself in we've got all that coming up okay very briefly just before i get into it i'll just tell you about where, where my opinions and thoughts on salt come from so 25 years uh, in a chemistry in the chemistry based industry so my my field is chemistry uh, not uh, to degree level I'm not I'm by no means but yeah work uh, research scientist in a chemistry field I have kept going for 26 maybe years now um, so a lot of what I talk about is from experience my own experiences with salt other people's experiences that I've seen witnessed heard um, and also from reading, I read a lot. I read journals, I read scientific papers on all kinds, aquaculture, fish farming, fish health, biology, everything there is to read about koi and most fish in general, I read. So all those things combined are what I'm basing my opinions on, where how I've arrived at the point I'm at today. And, and those are the opinions I'm gonna share with you today. So what is salt? salt is the name the term we use for sodium chloride the chemical sodium chloride chemical formula NaCl so what that means is one sodium atom and one chloride atom combined together to form a single sodium chloride NaCl okay to just briefly break that down a little further then one sodium atom sodium uh, chemical symbol for sodium is Na and, and sodium is a, a very reactive metal uh, in its natural form. It appears in nature, but not in the form of Na. Uh, pure in its metal form, it doesn't appear in nature. And Cl, again, chlorine, um, you may be more familiar with. Chlorine is a highly reactive gas at room temperature, a yellow gas. And again, highly reactive to the point it doesn't appear in nature as chlorine. Um, it appears in, only appears in nature in, in the form of ionic chloride compounds. And it, it's one of those chloride ions that is bound to the to the sodium in a sodium chloride molecule. So yes, yeah, sodium chloride or salt as we know it, as I'm sure you're aware, it's prevalent in our seas and oceans. And I guess worth making the point, I'm sure again, probably stating the obvious, but if you take a, a, a living thing from the a sea or an ocean, a fish, for example, you'd put it into fresh water, it will very quickly die. And the same works in reverse. If you take a, f a freshwater fish such as a koi, you put it in the sea, again, very quickly it will die. And, and this is essentially because the living things that, that call the seas home um, have evolved from a single cell many, many years back. And they've evolved in that environment. So everything about them is built, constructed to live optimally in that saline environment. And of course, the same can be said in reverse for freshwater fish. So koi, from a, from a single cell back millions of years ago, 
to the point they're at today. Koi have lived in various guises um, in fresh water. So everything about them is constructed from the ground up, built to be optimum in fresh water. So to kind of, to give you some perspective, fresh water, a fresh water lake is typically somewhere between naught and 100 milligrams per litre. So naught to 100 ppm of salt in fresh water. And contrast that to seawater, which is typically around 35 grams per litre. Um, so naught to 100 milligrams for fresh water, 35 grams per litre. Uh, in seawater and that's 35,000 ppm so you can see a vast difference between the two habitats. So it, it is fair to say that salt water is is an alien habitat to fish, uh, to koi sorry, and, and, and salt itself is an alien chemical to a, to a koi which is a freshwater fish. That said koi do have a level of salt, a background level of salt within their bodies and that not not to be confused with the salt in their environment but internally koi contain around about 0.8 0.9% salt and that interestingly is exactly the same as humans so yeah in that respect we've evolved to be salt free and and so have koi we can consume salt but uh, i'm sure you'll be aware high levels of salt consumption are dangerous in humans very harmful cause a lot of problems and koi are exactly the same they 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 have evolved in, in fresh water they have the same internal level of salt as us and excess salt causes also problems to koi internally and as i just said the koi have evolved and been built really from the ground up for that habitat so back way back um i say we had, when a single cell uh, began to divide and evolve Creatures that lived in the sea evolved down that path where they they were they evolved they were built they were constructed to to um, function optimally in in salt water. Koi, although indirectly because there has been some human intervention, but along that whole evolutionary line, the the koi that we have now is the the fish that we know now as koi have evolved in fresh water uh, from from that point. Uh, starting point if you go back far enough and so as I say they're built mother nature has built them to to function optimally in fresh water below 100 um, milligrams per litre or 100 ppm okay moving on to how salt is used in koi keeping so there really are two kind of trains of thought two two uses for salt wide widespread uses for salt in koi keeping Firstly, as a, as a high concentration, short term treatment, um, just like any other chemical treatment for treating a condition, um, salt, salt can be used. Now, the difference, I guess, with, with salt and other treatments, so if we take Lernex Pro, for example, a fluke treatment, you subject your koi to the Lernex Pro at the right concentration, that that concentration is strong enough to kill the flukes but not strong enough to kill the koi although of course there are side effects um, as with any treatment there are side effects on the koi from that Lernex Pro. The same is, is said of salt so salt is harmful to freshwater life and things that koi catch ultimately parasites are freshwater uh, dwelling organisms such as flukes so you subject them to salt which is alien to them and at the right level that salt will kill the parasites and not kill the sky and again there are side effects so you need to find the balance the right level the reason salt is slightly different to, to some of the, the other chemical treatments and a reason that it's not really as as practical is that with the Lernex Pro five six days down the line that chemical is now spent it's so effectively broken down it's consumed effectively it, it is no longer harming your fish and you can get rid of it with dilution but it it, it, it effectively has a, a a limited life and when i say life i mean a limited period where it's harmful to freshwater life salt unfortunately 
doesn't um, so when you put salt in your pond and you raise the concentration to a level that is high enough to kill the parasites unfortunately that salt is never spent it will stay, sit there indefinitely so you and you need to remove it manually and removing it is is quite a tricky process basically you have to dilute 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 but it, it, it takes a very long time to get rid of it and all the time it's in there it's continuing to be harmful and have a negative impact on your koi and so the solution with salt is often to use a, a bath or a dip so um, a separate container of water usually pond water bring up the saline level to the desired level remove the koi from the pond put it in the dip time it take it out put it back in the pond that way you're not contaminating the pond with salt and giving you this problem with getting rid of it but obviously the, the the problem with that is anything living in the pond anything on the other fish in the filters anywhere in that system you're not treating and this is why although salt will kill a lot of parasites it's not really usually the best solution there's usually a, a bespoke purpose-made chemical that's been developed to have maximum impact on the parasites with minimum impact on the fish and become spent after a period of time so salt can be used in that way um, it certainly does kill a, a quite a large number quite a large range of parasites so for example salt will kill costia um, it will kill white spot ick it will kill carpedema virus cv um, or sleepy disease it will kill chilodinella and it will kill trichodina so yeah i think i've said everything there. so yeah quite a good list you know quite a good range um i mean that kind of sort of reinforces the point that salt is is quite a nasty chemical for freshwater life quite a good range of, of things that it will kill but as I say it comes with this issue of if you put it in your pond it's very difficult to get rid of you've got to almost change all of your water to neutralize it immediately if you do it in the form of a dip a bath uh, you're not treating the whole system so that's the first use of salt uh, with koi as I say high concentration short term okay so the second uh the second use that i touched on there is is longer term and lower concentrations and and this this one is is misused a lot people will tend to throw salt in their ponds at low concentrations thinking it, it will somehow stop them getting parasites in the spring is one year a lot or um, there's, there's lots of other reasons people claim for putting salt in their pond at low concentration the fact is salt at low concentration will kill nothing doesn't kill any parasites at all doesn't prevent parasites from farming um, in fact salt at low concentration has no benefit uh, whatsoever to a healthy koi so a koi that isn't ill uh, a koi that isn't suffering in some way from something there is no benefit whatsoever to that koi from salt but also it has the effect of kind of building immunity so parasites which are there which are always present can build up immunity to the salt at low concentrations because it's kind of it's almost akin to having um, a vaccine for a human going out getting a covid vaccine subject yourself to a little level of covid and build up an immunity to it that's effectively what you can do with parasites by exposing them to a low level of salt because it, it killed nothing so not all bad there is there is a way there is a use of, of salt at low levels that is beneficial to koi uh, at low concentration and that that's to do with with osmoregulatory stress so i'll go into what that is well, as I said earlier, koi's internal body is made up of about 0.9% salt, typically. The water in your pond is hopefully 0% salt. And so, through a process of osmosis, moves the water from the lower concentration, the lower salinity, to the higher salinity level. So, water is, is constantly, uh, through osmosis, moving into the koi's body. So the koi needs to balance this and control this itself and that process 
um, uses energy, uses resources. And so if, if you can imagine, if you brought the, the, the level of pond water, the saline level in the pond water up to closer to the, the natural level in the cow's body, those two levels are closer. There's less transfer of water from the pond in, into the cow's body. And so the cow needs to work less hard to maintain that level uh, and to control that level. And so what you effectively do by increasing the salinity of the pond water is take some of the workload off it. You reduce the workload and then you reduce the stress and hence the koi has resources that it's no longer using to control the water level and it can use those resources to heal, to recover um, for wherever else they may need, need to be. So short term, and it is a short term process, if you have a koi that is ill, you can take some pressure off it by increasing the salinity of your pond water slightly to reduce that osmoregulatory stress. And the, the times you would use this, uh, I guess, so if you've got a cow that's suffering from stress, so if it's, if it's suffered an injury, for example, you can take some stress off it, uh, help it recover. If it's been on a, a stress through a long journey, um, if it's had a parasite infection, any kind of stressful circumstances, then you can take some, some pressure off that fish and help it to recover, to focus better on recovery um, by increasing the salt level in your pond water slightly. But again, it, it's a very low level. It's not to levels that are gonna kill anything. It is a very low level, typically 0.3 to 0.5%. So they're, they're the two kind of areas where you can benefit from salt in, in the koi environment, and that is it. Okay, so there, there isn't any other benefit to be had. And as I said, there is no benefit whatsoever to a, a healthy koi from exposing it to salt. In terms of the positives, that really is it. High concentration, short term to kill parasites. Low concentration, short term, to relieve some stress and some pressure from a koi that is ill or ailing in some way, but no benefit to a healthy koi from adding salt. And that is backed up everything I've read. There, you, there isn't a single scientific study, a paper, a journal. There is not a single piece of scientific literature in existence that claims a positive benefit to a healthy koi from exposing it to salt. I will move on to the misuses of salt. So I hear a lot people keep a salt level in the pond all the time. I hear people who increase the salt level in the winter. Various, there's various things banded about, various reasons for people justify putting salt in their pond. Hi guys, I'm just gonna interrupt myself there briefly, conscious about how long this video is getting. So I've split it into two parts, a part one and a part two. Part two is available straight away. There's no uh, break between them, but I just thought I'd give you a chance to, to split it up and have a, have a break. Uh, if you want to get straight into part two, you can click on somewhere up there and do that straight away. 